Essentially, our main interest is how do humans affect tropical rainforests. So that's a very broad view of things, but we're interested in things like forest destruction and the fragmentation of the forest, what happens when agriculture or logging goes in and chops up the forest into pieces, which is what happens typically if you've got soy farming in the Amazon or cattle ranching. You get these little islands of survival or islands of extinction of forest. Uh, we look at the impacts of, uh, on plants and animals of logging operations, of fire. Uh, we're interested in hunting. We're working quite a lot on the impacts of hunting and road expansion in Africa, in tropical Africa. Uh, we're also quite interested in the effects of global change, of global warming and changing, changing uh, conditions of the, of the atmosphere on tropical forests and tropical ecosystems. So we're really pretty, pretty broadly interested in how do people, how do humans affect rainforests and what are the implications for the survival of nature. Have you seen a change in your 30 years that you've been working? Definitely. Uh, unfortunately, tropical rainforests are changing fast. Uh, about 40 million acres of tropical rainforests are being destroyed every year. That works out to about 100 football fields a minute. So there's an incredible rate of simple forest destructions. Another thing is that we're really seeing a shift in terms of what's causing the forest destruction. 30 years ago, everybody talked about slash and burn farmers. These were small farmers that went out in the rainforest with their machetes and they cut down forest and they burned some of the forest and, and they planted crops. Instead of small scale farmers, now we're seeing bulldozers and we're also seeing these kinds of activities because of increasing economic globalization. Everything's connected now. Um, we're seeing these activities tend to be um, important in terms of providing an economic impetus for road building. And so uh, oil companies will go in and build roads in the rainforest, timber companies will go in, uh, other people will go in and build roads, and that opens up the frontier. We refer to it as, as sort of the Pandora's box effect. You suddenly open up this box and you oftentimes get a spontaneous invasion of the forest by land speculators, by hunters, by miners, by colonists, and very often this just leads to rampant forest destruction. There's definitely hope, there's definitely some causes for optimism. I mean, for example, this program right here, this is a great example. People's awareness is increasing, people's awareness is improving. Things like this help a lot. Um, and so, and this tends to develop, it tends to sort of connect in other ways. Politicians get influenced, programs develop, develop. So there are different kinds of programs that are happening now. There's much more interest in, in a lot of developing countries in forest conservation. There's a lot of interest, for example, in using carbon trading, in using the mechanisms that are being set up as part of the Kyoto Protocol to try to help to save forests. I think one of the things that people need to realize is that about a quarter of all the billions of tons of greenhouse gases that are going into the atmosphere every year, so this is maybe two or three billion tons of carbon emissions, are spewing forth when people are knocking down and raising and burning tropical rainforests. And so that's a very important cause of global warming is the destruction of the tropical forests. Um, so if we can slow down forest destruction, in addition to driving more efficient cars and improving the efficiency of our industries, we can then have an impact on slowing down global warming. The basic way it works, it's a little bit complicated, but the basic way is that, for example, take a country like the United States. Okay. Now let's say the U.S. agrees to reduce their carbon emissions to a certain level, or, or let's say certain industries agree to do that. Okay. Well, let's say a coal-fired, an, an energy utility says that they're going to reduce their carbon emissions. So they need to reduce their emissions. Now one way they could do that is to say retrofit their coal-fired generating plants or rebuild their plants or build new plants, which can be very expensive, cost billions of dollars. They could do that, or they can also take some of that money and they could, for example, give it to Costa Rica or Brazil or Thailand or Malaysia and say, use some of that for protecting your forests or for regenerating some of your forests. And we know pretty well how much carbon is in the rainforest. I know right there that that rainforest behind us has about 200 tons of carbon in its vegetation. And that's going to be, if that was knocked down and burned in a hectare of forest, about two football fields. If that's knocked down and burned, that's going to go up in the atmosphere as smoke. On the other hand, if a country plants trees or allows the forest to regenerate, that carbon will go back into the vegetation. It will come out of the atmosphere. And so it's going to help the global warming situation. So there's these mechanisms are being set up now 
to use to essentially use carbon trading to try to help protect forests, and it's it shows a lot of promise. I think being willing to provide some some donations for for some of these projects would be fantastic. You can get involved with some of the conservation organizations, and many of these are doing a really good job. You can support politicians that are being smart about the environment. And I think another thing you can do is you can look at your own backyard, because it's surprising how people in developing countries very often look at the United States. And for, for me, for example, as someone who works in the developing world and tries to advise countries about their, their use of natural resources, you know, frankly, they will look at me sometimes and I say, you're an American, and we're not very impressed with what you, the United States is doing. We need to drive more efficient cars. We need to be smarter about what we're doing, smarter about our energy use, smarter about protecting our own resources. I think that will actually send a pretty powerful message around the world. A tipping point is, uh, we see this happening over and over again. A system will get stressed, and suddenly, for almost no ex explainable reason, it will suddenly change. And I'll give you an example of this. There was a bay in Florida. It's called Florida Bay. It was a big bay, about 2,200 uh, kilometers in area. It was getting some septic pollution coming in every year. It just happened like that every year. One day, almost overnight, that bay turned into a clear water bay with manatees and seagrasses, and it became a murky dead zone almost overnight. And it just hit a tipping point. No one really understood why. It just happened. And there's a lot of concern that something like the Amazon could do the same thing. And one of the key reasons is that the Amazon generates a lot of its own rainfall. Right. It's a huge area of forest. The vegetation gives off a lot of water vapor as it's photosynthesizing. And that water vapor is very important in terms of going up and forming clouds and maintaining the rain. So the more forest you cut down, the less moisture you get going up into the atmosphere and then the less rain that's going to come back down again. So there's less of this recycling of water. No one knows how much of the Amazon can be cut down before it reaches that tipping point where the system suddenly collapses in a rage of droughts and fires. There's a great deal of concern about this. We've had the world's top scientists here a few years ago talking about this exact issue, trying to identify this. We have not been able to put our finger on the answer. People have suggested that maybe 30% of the forest destroyed more than that would potentially be reaching a tipping point. But the bottom line is we're shaking the dice with the Amazon. In fact, we're shaking the dice with the whole planet right now.